Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for how you have been helping us in this series, opening our eyes to possibilities. And I pray tonight again as you challenge your people to step out into the waters like uh, Peter did. I pray, Lord, that our lives will be enriched and empowered in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because we know your answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. By the grace of God tonight, as we look at the scriptures, I'm looking at the message, the color of risk. Somebody says, what kind of a message is this? Well, as we go on, you will understand. And by God's grace, the outline will soon be on the chart so that you can download the outline. But I'm talking on the color of risk. Essentially, I'm talking about risk and taking risk. And especially, generally, but particularly in investing. Now, what you will discover is that life, risk is part and parcel of life. Some people don't want to understand that. Risk, again, I say, is part and parcel of life. There is nothing like a risk-free life. It does not exist. Risk-free life does not exist. The only difference between, you know, from one individual to the other is the level of risk we are prepared to take. But every individual in the world must take risks. We take risks every day. Think about it. The farmer takes a risk with his seed and he sows that seed with the expectation of an harvest. But there's no guarantee that there's going to be an harvest. It's a risk. You know why? There's a risk of rodents digging up the seeds and eating them up, and you have no harvest. But the farmer takes that risk. There's a risk that some of his seed may eventually fall on ground that is not very good, and eventually those seeds do not produce an harvest. It's a risk. Have you read in Matthew chapter 13 where Jesus Christ said, a sower went to sow. Some fell by the wayside. Birds of the air took them up. They never brought an harvest. Some fell among thorns. The thorns took them up. They never brought an harvest. Some fell on the rocky ground. Eventually, they never brought an harvest. But some fell on good soil. They brought 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. That farmer took a risk with his seed. Losses are inevitable, but gains and big returns are also inevitable if you do it right. So risk is part and parcel of life. The businessman takes risk with his seed capital. There is an inherent possibility of business failure and loss. He could lose that capital. The business may not turn out well, and all the money has invested is gone. But every day, people take risk and start new businesses. It's important. Risk is part of life. You know, in the kingdom, many times we don't want to hear about risk. We don't want to take risks. And because of that, many of us will remain poor. Opportunities pass us by regularly. You remember what I told you? That if you spell the word poor, P-O-O-R, what does it mean? Passing over opportunities regularly. Show me an individual that is passing over opportunities regularly, I will show you a person that will remain poor. It's too risk averse. In case I do this and I fail, in case I do this and I lose my money, in case I do this, 
So this covers. And opportunities will come across his way. He will pass over those opportunities and then he's complaining why he remains poor. My brother, you will remain poor. If you pass over opportunities regularly, you will remain poor. P-O-O-R. Passing over opportunities regularly. You will remain poor. You need to take risks. And I'm going to talk so much tonight about taking risks. Very, very important because our mentality in the kingdom needs to change. The Lord owns the earth and the fullness thereof. But the people that get the best out of it are the people that take risks. Let me give you an example. 1948, there was so much hyperinflation in Germany after the Second World War that all the currencies in Germany were cancelled completely. Somebody was a millionaire before, it was reduced to zero. Everybody, all the currency in the banks and everywhere rendered useless. And every German was given 40 Dutch mark to start all over. 1948, but today there are billionaires in Germany. There are millionaires in Germany, and there are still paupers in Germany. But everybody started from the same base, 1948. Some people took risk, and they've turned out very well. And others didn't take risk, and they remain poor. So that's an example. You know, somebody said that, give everybody the same amount of money. 10 years later, much of the money will be in the hands of the people that take risk, and the other people, they would have lost their money. So it is not a case of equal distribution. Even if you distribute it equally, it's going to redistribute itself according to the level of risk that people are ready to take. So tonight, as we talk about the color of risk, the outline is on the chart, and you can you can you can you can download it. We must take risk. We must take risk. And I pray the Lord Himself He will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Many of us drive cars. Driving the car is taking a risk. Somebody say, what? Oh, the risk of having an accident is always there. Every day you drive, the risk of having an accident is there every single day. But do you say because of that, you are not going to drive? No, you take intelligent you know, action. You make sure you observe the road, you know, obey the traffic rules, respect other, you know, drivers on the on the on the road, and make sure that your car, the brake is okay, the light is functioning well, everything. You you take necessary precautions, but you don't avoid that risk. You you go on driving. Driving the car involves a risk, the risk of having an accident. How about eating? We eat every day. Eating involves a risk. The risk of sometimes the food getting into the wrong track, hasn't that happened? Isn't that why sometimes people choke? Because the food, instead of going into the right track, it has gone into another one. And every time you eat, that's a possibility. It's a risk. But you don't say, ah, because there's a risk of the food not going into the food track and going into another one, I will never eat. You will die of hunger. You take that risk every day and you eat. How about chewing your food? Oh, it's taking the risk. Chewing your food is taking the risk. You say, what risk? The risk of your teeth biting your tongue when the things are not synchronized. Hasn't it happened sometime that your teeth will bite your tongue and you will cry a little bit? And I'm sure tomorrow you are going to still chew your food. And next tomorrow you are still going to chew your food. You take the risk every day when you chew your food because that possibility is there of your teeth biting your tongue. It's a risk. You know what I'm trying to say? We live with risk every day. But now we need to take it to another level. We need to take risks deliberately to be able to better our lives. And I'm praying that tonight's message is going to change your mentality. It's going Amen. to catapult you to another level. And it's going to help you to be courageous, to take action on all the things that we have been talking about in this financial series, and it will benefit your life in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, somebody said that one of the greatest risks in life is not taking risks. By the time you come to the end of your life, 
And God shows you that if you have taken this risk, look at where you would have ended. Some people will be crying and weeping, but it's too late. It's at the end of life. And one of the greatest regrets is that we didn't take enough risks. My brother, rise up and take risks. My sister, rise up and be courageous and take risks. Don't be part of the people that never take risks and many of the opportunities in life, pass them by. Don't pass over opportunities regularly. But in order to take advantage of opportunities, you need to take risk. And I pray the Lord himself, he will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. The first point I want to talk about is why is it that people do not take risk? Number one, paralysis through inordinate risk aversion. Some people, they are just, you know, they want to avoid risk at any cost. Every time they are so dedicated to, uh, 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 you know, avoiding risk and they will be paralyzed. They will not be able to do anything. And that's not the purpose of God. That's not the purpose of God. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. I, I believe I'm speaking to somebody on the platform tonight. Yes. You have always been risk averse. He's wasting your opportunities and wasting your life. You need to take action. You need to take risks. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, let's read from verse 1. It says, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, cast thy bread upon the waters. Oh, somebody says, now it says, for thou shalt find it after many days. Somebody says, if I cast the bread upon the waters, I don't find it. Well, it's gone. Don't worry. You cast another one tomorrow. How about if that one also goes and I don't find it? Don't worry. Cast another one day after. Say, Pastor, I'm casting the bread upon the waters. I'm not finding anything. Don't worry. Eventually, you will find. It says, cast your bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Look at in verse 6. In the morning, he says, sow thy seed. And in the evening, we told not thy hand. He says, be busy all day, taking risks. Be busy in the morning, sowing seed. Busy in the afternoon, sowing seed. Busy in the evening, sowing seed, taking risk. In the morning, sow thy seed. And in the evening, we told not thy hand. Then he says, for thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both will be alike good. You know what he says? Maybe the one you saw in the morning will bring no result. Maybe the one you bring take in, saw in the evening is the one that will produce an harvest. Maybe the one you saw in the morning is the one that will produce an harvest. And the one you saw in the evening, it will be lost. Or he said, you might even be really, really blessed. Both of them turn out well. But he says, even though there is possibility of loss, take a risk. In the morning, sow your seed. In the evening, don't withhold your hand. I can lose some seed. Matthew chapter 13, that sower lost some seeds. The seeds that fell by the wayside, they were lost. Both of the air ate them up. They didn't produce harvest. The seeds that fell among thorns, they were lost. The thorns choked them up. They produced no harvest. The seeds that fell on the rocky ground, they produced no harvest because there was not enough soil for them to grow. They produced no harvest. But remember, some fell on good soil and produced 30 fold and 60 fold and 100 fold. Eventually, the harvest is bigger than the seed that was sown because of those that germinated. In the morning, sow thy seed. In the evening, we told not thy hand. You don't know whether this or that will turn out to be good or whether both of them will turn out to be good. You know what he's saying? Take a risk. And my brother tonight, I'm telling you, take a risk. My sister, I'm telling you tonight, take a risk. Don't let things, you know, hamper you. Don't let your life be so risk averse that you are paralyzed. You can't do anything because of fear. Look at verse 5. The Bible says, uh, look at verse 4. He that observed the wind shall not sow. And he that regarded the clouds shall not reap. 
If you are waiting for the best conditions, you will never do anything in life. That's what he's saying. You want perfect condition before you sow. You will never sow. Conditions are not always going to be perfect. Continuously observing the wind, you will not sow. Con 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 continuously regarding the, the clouds, you will not reap. Because conditions are not going to wait for you to be perfect. You have to take a risk in spite of inclement weather, in spite of rough weather, in spite of turbulence, in spite of the dangers. We take a risk and move out and do something with our lives, with our resources. That's what we are talking about. You must take risk. And I pray the Lord himself will help every one of us to take risk in Jesus' name. Amen. The ultimate risk of aversion leads to complete paralysis. He that observes the wind shall not sow. He that regards the cloud shall not reap. We are encouraged to get busy all the day. In the morning, sow your seed. In the evening, don't withhold your hand. We should be sowing seeds. We should be casting our bread upon the waters. We should be taking risks. Maybe not all the risks that we take will bring out profitable results, but let me tell you, you are likely to emerge victorious overall. The ones that produce 30 fold and 60 fold and 100 fold, they will wipe out all the losses you have sustained. You will come out a big winner. And I'm praying that the Lord Himself he will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Kings chapter 4. Let me show you some people that took a risk. And I'm seeing my sister there tonight say, Pastor, from tonight I'm taking a risk. I'm changing my life enough of all this risk aversion. I'm taking a risk and going somewhere. And you will go somewhere in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Kings chapter 7 from verse 1. Let's see how you take risk. Look, look at this. Second Kings chapter 7, verse 1. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord in tomorrow about this time. He shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the case of Samaria. And if I read from, from, from verse 3, and there were four leper, leprous men at the entering in of, this, of the gate, and they said one to another, why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine in the city, there is famine in them, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die, we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we, we die also. Now therefore, now therefore come and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. You understand? This leper said, we have three options. Option number one, let's go into the city. But there is no food in the city. Hunger will kill us in the city. We know for certainty our end. If we sit where we are, there is no food here. We are going to die also. Now, what is our third option? Our third option is let's go to the camp of the Syrians. They know we are Israelites. We have two options there. They may have mercy on us and save us alive, give us food, then we live. If they kill us, we are going to die anyway, either in the city or where we are going to die of hunger. It only accelerates the death. You know what they did? You know what they did? They took the chance to go to the camp of the Syrians. That's taking the risk. They said if we go to the city, hunger will kill us. If we sit where we are, hunger will kill us. Only one option. But if we go to the camp of the Syrians, we have a possibility of living. They may show us mercy, give us food, and save us alive. Pity us. Or they may kill us. Anyway, if they kill us, that's the only option we have in these two other places. Since we have another option in that place, let's take the risk of going there. What did they do? Let's see it. That's what we're talking about, taking the risk. Let's see what they do. In verse 5, and they rose up in the twilight to go into the, onto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the 
uttermost part of the camp of, of, of Syrians. Behold, there was no man there, for the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel had hired against us the kings of the, of, uh, the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and they and fled for their life. And when these lepers came in, came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into, the, into one tent and did eat and drink and carried dense, uh, I mean, and carried dense silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried dense silver uh, and went and hid it and carried also and went and hid it. Then they said, want to, you understand? They found abundance, they lived. Then they said, it's no good though. Let's go and tell the king in the city the abundance is here. That's how they had in the city. Everybody was blessed. Why? Because some lepers took a risk. Their lives were saved. The nation was saved. The nation was blessed because some people took a risk. My brother, you must take a risk. My sister, you must take a risk. All this risk aversion in the kingdom, it must vanish in Jesus' name. Yes. You must take risks. So the lepers in Elisha's time, they took a risk and it paid off big time for them and for the nation. Let me tell you, the fear of failure has paralyzed many to the point that they never make any attempt at success. Pursuing success carries a risk every single time. You can lose. You may fail. You know, it's like, you know, I like medical doctors. If you want to be a successful surgeon, you must be somebody who is ready to take risks. You come across a disease that has never been known. There is no medical cure. There is no analysis. You are coming across it the first time and you want to treat it and you want to operate. You are going to study, you are going to do something. But you know, they will tell the patient, this operation has never been done. If we do it, there's 50 50 chance you may live or you may not live. They make him to sign. And the surgeons are going to attend that operation for the very first time. No example to follow. They take a risk. Sometimes the patient dies. But sometimes the patient lives. And they discover a new medical procedure. And it's published and said, first, when they separated Siamese twins, there was a doctor that took the risk and did it first. When they did brain surgery, there was somebody that took the risk first. When we talk about cesarean session today, you know how cesarean session started? It was Caesar, the emperor of Rome. The wife was going to give birth and it was difficult. And Caesar said, well, the doctor should do what? And they opened the womb of the woman to carry out the baby. The woman still died, but they saved the baby. And today they call it cesarean section. That was the first. And it's named after that. They took a risk. My brethren, we need to take risk. So if you are on the platform tonight and you have been somebody that every single time you avoid risk, you avoid risk, you, you are inordinately you know, glued to risk aversion. It will lead to paralysis. You will not be able to do anything. If I do this, if I fail, my brother, there is no sin in failing. You know, I came to Italy. By the grace of God, when I came to Italy, I met four churches in Italy. One church in Rome, about 40 brethren. Another church in Naples, only five brethren. Another church in Modena, only five brethren. Another church in Torino, only five brethren. In total, I met about 55 brethren in Italy. And you know, we started taking risks. We started moving forward. 
Today we have more than 50 churches in Italy taking risk. Oh, we have started churches in some places that we failed. I remember we went to Bengabo, invested a lot, did everything. The church failed. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't work out. Then we pulled back. We analyzed everything and we launched out again. Today we have a thriving church in Bengabo. Yeah, I'm not afraid of failure. Say hey, they will say pastor doesn't have anointing. Otherwise, why did the church fail? Maybe pastor, maybe God didn't lead him. You are too, you are too, too conscious of what people will say. People are going to talk anyway. It was David Uba that said, if you don't want to, if you don't want people to talk, do nothing, say nothing, be nothing. Then people will not talk. But people are going to talk. Don't be afraid of failure. We failed in Bergamo. We pulled back. Two years later, we relaunched into that city. Today, we have a thriving church there. We failed the first time. Yes, failure is part of life. I'm not afraid to take risks. And we have many churches that are thriving today because we are taking risks. Risk in church planting. You need to take risks. We are too, we are too, too comfortable with risk aversion. We don't want to fail. Failure is not a sin. And I'm going to show you tonight, even the attitude of God, how God operates. And you are a child of God. You should operate the way God operates. Very, very important. So you, you, you see this? These lepers, they took a risk. It blessed their life. It blessed the life of the nation. The fear of failure has paralyzed many to the point that they will not even do anything. If you want to pursue success, you have to take a risk. That's what happened to Saul. Saul didn't want to take a risk in facing Goliath. It paralyzed the whole army. 40 days in the morning and in the evening, Goliath was messing them up, mesmerizing them, abusing them, cursing them. Nobody could do anything. They couldn't take a risk. But David came and said, let no man's heart fail because of this part. Your servant will go and face this Philistine. So I said, what, 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 what? You are a young boy. This man is a veteran of war. He has been a warrior from his youth. You are just a young. David said, don't worry. Let me give you two testimonies. I was keeping my father's sheep. Lion came, I killed it. Bear came, I killed it. This was a concise Philistine. Saul, if you don't understand, the lion is the king of the jungle. The way I kill the king of the jungle, that's the way I'm going to kill this captain of the city. Both of them are the same. The lion in the jungle pray to my earthly father's sheep. The captain of this city, this Goliath, I mean, he's a, he a predator. He's a predator to my heavenly father's sheep. But both of them are predators. I will kill. The way I kill that one, God will help me also. I will kill this one. With faith, you know what? How is faith spelled? Somebody says, Pastor, faith is spelled F-A-I-T-H. I know that. But let me tell you tonight, faith is spelled risk. <laughs> faith is taking a risk. Stepping into the water like, like Peter is taking a risk. There's a possibility of sinking. But he did. Do you realize that Peter is the only one we have recorded on in the Bible that he walked on water? How about Matthew? Oh, he was too afraid to come out of the, out of the ship. How ah, about John? They were too afraid to step into the water. There's no record that they ever walked on water. They were too afraid. But Peter, he was ready to take risk. The risk of sinking. And you could see, he was almost sinking. And he had to cry, Jesus, save me. And Christ had to pull him out. Stepping out of the boat into the water, it involves risk. Risk of sinking. But take the risk anyhow. Take the risk anyhow. Tonight, I pray that you are making up your mind and saying a new life is starting. A new mm -hmm. life where I'm going to be courageous enough to take some risks. Risk that is going to profit my life. Risk that is going to move me forward. Risk that is going to end in the place of greatness. Risk that is going to take me to the place of, of achievement and accomplishment. And the Lord himself, he will do it in Jesus' name. Amen. David took the risk to confront Goliath. And what happened? He won a massive victory. He won a massive victory. We read it in the Bible. The fear of danger. You know, somebody said, ah, why are you not going out? There's a lion in the streets. I cannot go out. 
Take a risk. The lion can kill me, but you can end up killing the lion. You go out and kill the lion and do what you need to do. Don't let it make you housebound. That's what the Bible says in Proverbs. The person is not going out, he's housebound. And then he says, a lion is in the streets. And because of the fear of the lion in the street, he cannot take a risk, he's forever housebound. That's why some of us, we are in the same point, year after year, after year, after year, no movement. Because anytime you want to move, somebody will, something will tell you, there's a lion in the street, this may be your end. And then you stop. Another year will come, and you say, I'm going to do this thing. And the, person, the thing will say, what has come over your head? There is a lion in the street. It will kill you. And then you cool down. And my sister, 10 years have gone. That project, always procrastinating. I will do it. I will do it. I will do it. And it's all about taking risk. Because every time you want to take risk, something will come and tell you, there is a lion in the street. If you do it, this may be your end. Take that risk, confront that lion, kill that lion and accomplish. Confront that Goliath, defeat him and live in victory. The Lord will do it in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. You remember Jesus told two parables, very, very important. The parable of the pound, Luke chapter 19, and the parable of the talent, Matthew chapter 25. Some people were given talents, one that didn't want to take any risk, he hid it in the ground. Some people were given pounds, the one that didn't want to take a risk, he also hid it in the ground, in a napkin. When the master came back, he went and dug it and said, you gave me a pound, this is your pound. You gave me a talent, this is your talent. Uh, I didn't want to lose it, I was too afraid, and I didn't want to tell stories when you came. You know the judgment? It was taken from them and given to the person. The one that said, your pound has gained 10 pounds. The one that didn't take a risk, the pound was taken away from him and given to the person that took the maximum risk. The one that said, your five talents has gotten five more and I have 10 talents. Now, the one that has no, I mean, in one talent, it was taken from him and given to the person that has 10. They cried, he has 10, say yes. To him that has, more will be given. To him that doesn't have, even the one is not taking risk with, it will be taken away from him. He lost it. It's important. God was, the other people, they took a risk. They traded with the money. They could have lost the capital, but thank God they didn't lose the capital, they multiplied it. But they took a risk. Jesus told those two parables, and you need to understand, they are the parables of the kingdom. What does he mean? He's saying, those talent God has given you, take a risk. Deploy them, employ them, invest them. Those resources that God has given you, take a risk, deploy them, invest them, utilize them. Don't hide them in a napkin and put them in the soil because you are so risk averse. I pray the Lord Himself will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two. So as we talk about paralysis through inordinate research aversion, that some people never do anything in life because they are too risk averse. Every time they are too careful. No, they must think and think and think and think and think a thousand times. And by the time they think, they think themselves out of the opportunity. Risk aversion leads to complete paralysis. But then as we take risk, there must be prudence in assessing risk. We don't just act foolishly. Ephesians chapter 5 tells us, you know, that we should walk with wisdom. We should not walk foolishly. So that's important. As we are taking risk, we are taking risk with, you know, real, prudent, wise assessment. Now, we must exercise wisdom in assessing the risk involved in any situation before we proceed. That's why Jesus said in Luke chapter 14, that if you want to go and fight a battle, you assess your resources. You have 10,000 soldiers, but the other person has 20,000 soldiers. 
Will you be able with 10,000 soldiers meet those, that person with 20,000 soldiers? Do you have the possibility of winning? Do you have better ammunition? Do you have better strategies? Because it's not only a game of numbers. During Operation Desert Storm, Iraq has 1 million foot soldiers. America has much less. But America overran Iraq as a result of better technology, better strategy. So it's not only a game of numbers. Yes, you are going to fight with 10,000 soldiers. And the other individual has 20,000 soldiers. Assess your resources, your weapons, your strategy. And Jesus said, you will see whether you are able to meet him that is coming against you with 10,000 soldiers. If you cannot, that the odds are stacked against you, then he says, don't waste human lives unnecessarily. Then surrender. Call for a truce. You know, try to find a way to settle. That's assessing risk. That's risk assessment. Over there in Luke chapter 14. No, so we must exercise wisdom in assessing risk. Now, when the odds are grossly stacked against you, then you leave it, you desist. No, somebody says, well, there, there is poison. I want to show people, you know, I want to tell people how dangerous this poison is. Then you swallow the poison. That's senseless risk. You may never tell to, you may never live to tell the story. We don't take senseless risk. Yes, we take risk, but we take intelligent risk. We assess the risk that we are taking before we go into it. That's important. Now, when we do investment, there's a risk. Cash investments, so people, all their money, they pile it in deposit account. And look at Europe, over the last almost 10 years, the deposit rate in Europe has been about 1%. So you put 10,000 pounds in an account. After one year, they will give you a return of 100 pounds, 1%. And some people put their money there and they are very happy. But you know what? Inflation has even eaten that 100 pounds is worth nothing. That's the problem with cash investments, deposit accounts. The returns, the risk is very low. It still carries risk. Somebody says, which risk? Oh, there can be a bank run. In England, Northern Rock Bank, when bust, you remember Northern Rock, it went bust. You remember some other banks, that can be bank run, and you may never even get that deposit back. So it's not totally you know, risk-free, no. But it's very low risk, but also very low returns. And what happens? Inflation even eats up that returns. The money you need within the next six months, within the next one month, the money you need to pay your rent, to pay your mortgage, to live, that's the money that should be in the bank. Any other excess, you should invest it in better, better ways that are going to give you returns. Let me give you an example. Now, the investments we have done as a family. Last year, we got over 16,000 pounds returns. As a pastor, I'm here, I'm working, I'm full-time. I'm not paid by the church, but by God's grace, by the grace of God, the Lord is giving us returns and we're using it to, to, to further our lives. This year, you know, COVID-19, people say, ah, the world is going to crash, this, this and that, we just continue. You know, some companies have come out stronger, even despite COVID-19. This year, we are ending up with almost 30,000 pounds of returns from investment, much better than even last year. So over two years, you are talking about close to 50,000 pounds returns. Why do I want to, to, to keep my money in the bank and be you know, getting 1% returns when there are better prospects there? Since Greece is not going to collapse tomorrow, Tesco is not going to go underground tomorrow. National grid, if national grid goes, goes underground tomorrow, everybody in England will be in darkness because they are responsible for the electricity, you know, in the UK. All the pylons and everything belong to them. If they go bust, everybody is in darkness. Then the world is coming to an end. It's not going to happen. You need to understand that. 
We need to be intelligent enough. You know, take a risk. And then you can get some nice returns that can bless your life. And you can be a channel of blessing to other people as well. Because as the resources come, you don't only eat it, you are a channel of blessing to other people, you know, from the resources. But take a risk. Very important. I pray the Lord himself, he will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. If you invest in property, of course, property investment takes a risk. It's much better than cash investment. It takes a, a risk of illiquidity. When you come to sell property, you can't just wake up on overnight and go to sell the property. It may take a month, it may take two months, it may take three months to sell the property. That's illiquidity of the property market. It's part of the risk. If you have tenants, you can have some tenant problems. It's part of the risk. There's no risk-free way of making money. Your tenant can be creating troubles for you every single time. You have to manage it. It's part of the risk. There's the risk of occupancy. You know, you may have a house that sometimes for about three, four months is not occupied while you're finding the next tenant, but mortgage has to be paid because you borrowed money to buy that property. It's part of the risk. But you would have assessed the risk very well and know that you can manage it. That even if this house is not occupied for the next three months, I'm capable of maintaining the mortgage and not getting into trouble while I'm doing this. We assess the risk well, but we take a risk. Assess the risk prudently, but take a risk. That's important. And we can invest in shares, in stocks. We call them equity investments, you know? And those carry higher risks, but the returns are significantly higher. What do I mean? When Debian Arms went bust, we lost some money in Debian Arms. Does that make me not to invest tomorrow? Of course, I'm going to invest tomorrow. <laughs> Before Debian Arms went bust, we have, we've already received a lot of dividends from dividends over many years. So it's not all complete loss. But does that mean some companies will go bust from time to time? But majority is going to stay sound, yielding you returns. So am I going to say because we lost money in debinars, we are not going to invest anymore? Oh, it's okay. You, we invest. We move on. And what we lost in debinars, we have made more than 10 times that. So what's the problem? If you, I told you the other time, some brethren gave me 6,800 in Italy, four brethren. Each one brought 1,700 pounds. If you multiply 1,700 by six by four, you get 6,800 pounds. It's too small a money, but anyway, can still can still do something. So that time, I invested it for those brethren. But let me tell you, we I invested a thousand pounds in Albert Fisher. Albert Fisher at that time was a producer, was a food producer. It went bust at that time. The food production industry they were squeezed. I invested 500 in Yorkshire Foods. Yorkshire Foods also was a food producer. They also went bust. Out of that 6,800 pounds, we lost a total of 1,500. 1,000 pounds in Alba Fisher, 500 pounds in Yorkshire Foods, remaining 5,300. But do you know that the remaining 5,300, where I invested them and then we managed them, Several years later, when we sold that investment, the investments were sold for over 25,000 pounds. Each of those brethren, they got over 6,000 pounds. Now, are they going to come to me and say, Pastor, you lost 1,500 pounds? I've, I've, I've returned to you far more than you gave me. Okay, you gave me 6,800. Let's forget about what I lost. I brought you 25,000. I've done, have I not tried? I've tried. So don't let the losses, you know, some people, they concentrate so much on the losses. No, 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 no. Be like the miner. I'm looking at my sister, you will be like the miner. Amen. You know, you know, when I say you look, be like the miner. When they go to the mines to mine gold, they will dig up soil, you know, as big as a whole house before they will find gold as small as this. But you know, the miners, they concentrate on the gold. They don't concentrate on the soil. But they're going to dig out more earth, more soil, before they will find something precious. But they concentrate on what they're digging for. Be like a miner. 
Focus on what you are looking for, not on the relevant. Focus on the big breaks, not on the losses. Focus on the good, not on the bad. Amen? Amen. So Amen. assess your risk, but take a risk. Tonight, I'm praying that all the brethren that you never take risk. You are too risk averse. You are too fearful. Tonight, God is taking away that spirit of fear. You will Amen. step out and walk on water. You Amen. will step out and take some risk. And Amen. to bring benefit to your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Assess the risk. Yes, but take a risk. So equity investments, they carry higher risk, but also they make you much more returns. There was a, an investment that we did, 100 pounds every month. I did the investment for the family. We did it for five years and five months. And if you calculate 100 pounds every month for five years and five months, five years is 12 times 5, 60, plus another five months, 65 months. In total, I invested 6,500 pounds in that investment. Today, that investment is about 60,000 pounds. There's something the family can do with that. I've told you another investment we did, 100 pounds every month. And that investment, I did it for six years and seven months. A total of 7,900 pounds. That was all. I took a risk for the family. That investment today is 200, over 230,000 pounds. We can do something significant with the, with the investment. You know, early this year, we needed to buy a house. And there was an investment that I did for the family a long time ago. I started in that investment 30 pounds every month. Then when things got better for the family, we increased it to you know 50 pounds. Then when things got better, we increased it to 70 pounds every month. And then after some time, we left it. The total we invested in that investment was 12,900 pounds. Early this year, we sold it 60,000 pounds plus. That was part of the capital that we, you know, that we deposited for bank to give us a mortgage. So then we bought the house. But 12,900 pounds was the total money invested from 30 pounds, 20, 30 pounds, 50 pounds, 70 pounds. Doesn't kill you, but can generate significant capital for you to take advantage of bigger opportunities tomorrow. We sold that investment this year and we got over 60,000 pounds and we gave it to the bank. Bank released the mortgage, we bought the house. My brethren, take a risk. All these pounds standing that is, uh, you know, sleeping, the sleep of death in the, in the banks, they need to come out. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because some of this money, they are just sitting in the bank, sleeping the sleep of death. What are you earning? Take a risk. Take a risk. Uh, I pray we will assess things in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at this, Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 7. I, I, I know some people are saying, I never had a sermon like this before. Yes, that's why you're on the platform. That's why you are here. We're talking, you know, things that are different. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 7. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. You know what he's saying? He says, remember the days of old. You were not even born. So how are you going to know? But there are people that know history. Say, ask them. Your father was born in the days of old. If you want to find out information that you don't know, if you ask him, he will tell you. The elders have been alive longer than you. You, you. you want some information they can tell you. What are we talking about? If you don't know how to do risk assessment, ask those who know. Ask the experts. Ask those who have gone before. That's why we are here as pastors. You can phone and we can give you counsel. Okay, do it this way, do it this way, do it this way, do it this way. I don't know how to assess risk, but some people do. Ask your fathers, ask your elders, but take a risk. Make the assessment. I pray the Lord himself, he will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. Wisdom is paramount in making educated guesses about trends, taking risks that pay off 
massively. The Bible says, if you lack wisdom, ask God. He will give you. Wisdom is the principal thing. With all you're getting, get wisdom. What does the Bible say? You know, take a risk, but make your assessment. Now, the last point, progress through intelligent risk acceptance. You must accept that life is part of risk. And I mean, risk is part of life. And that to make significant progress, you need to accept some risks and you need to take some risks. The farmer that accepts risk, who, you know, Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 3 tells us, don't sow among tons because there will not be harvest. So you are intelligent enough not to sow among tons. You are intelligent enough not to sow on the rocky ground. You are intelligent enough to break up your fallow ground before you sow. So the farmer that accepts risk, who intelligently does not sow among tons, who breaks the fallow ground before planting, must surely have an harvest. He will come back with an harvest. 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. If you intelligently, I mean, navigate your way, there will be good results. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. The Bible says, Now, he that ministrates seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed soul and increase the fruits of your righteousness. If you sow intelligently, God has guaranteed that he will multiply your seed soul. There will be a harvest. In Psalm 126, Psalm 126, verses 5 and 6. Psalm 126, verses 5 and 6. Psalm 26, verses 5 and 6. The Bible says that they that sow in tears, how will they reap? Enjoy. 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 He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless Come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. He's saying, if we intelligently sow, there will be a harvest. We may sacrifice, we may sow in pain, we may sow in difficulty, but we're going to come back rejoicing, you know, with bountiful bumper harvest. And that will be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Those who accept risk, they make occasional losses. Yes, the farmer, the seed on the, by the wayside, no, didn't produce anything. The one that fell among us didn't produce anything. The one on the rocky soil didn't produce anything. But the ones that fell on the good soil, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. So those who are self risk, they make occasional losses. But more often than not, I mean, more often than not, they experience great returns. Fear of failure, fear of loss, they are not from God. Second Timothy chapter one. My, my brother, if every time you want to do a project, fear will grip your heart, it's not from God. The Bible says fear has torment and God does not torment his children. That fear is not from God. Hear it from me tonight. That fear is not from God. Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven. The Bible says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Fear has terror. God does not give his children terror. He doesn't terrorize his children. Fear is not from God. The fear of failure is not from God. The fear of loss is not from God. Take a risk. There will be losses sometimes, but take a risk. Don't fear. You tackle some projects, there will be failure sometimes, but take a risk. Don't let the fear of failure hinder you from launching out. You have toiled all the night and you have caught nothing. Nevertheless, at his word, take, launch out into the deep. It will surprise you. You will catch abundance in the morning. Take a risk. Don't allow your past failure to tie you to the shoreline. 
or failure. Take a risk. Launch out into the deep. That's the message tonight. The color of risk. Take a risk. So we need to understand that fear is not from God. The fear of failure is not from God. The fear of loss is not from God. You know, some people don't get married because of fear. Especially women. Maybe they met a man and they built all their hopes on the man. Unfortunately, the rascal, you know, just messes the woman up and runs away. And the woman is disappointed and goes for another man. And the same thing happens and goes for another one. And sometimes, unfortunately, the same thing happens. And that woman can close up forever and say, I'm not taking any risk anymore. All these men, they are all the same. My sister, we are not all the same. I am good. And my wife knows it. Amen. Not everybody Amen. is bad. Take a risk. If you if you if you are not going to, you may you may remain unmarried. That's why some women have remained unmarried at 60 and 65. They want to get married, but the past experiences have been so bitter, they are not ready anymore to take a risk. And it hinders them. Take a risk. There will be losses sometimes. There will be failures sometimes. There will be defeats sometimes. But take a risk. The outcome ultimately is going to be great because you serve a God, a God that will help you, that will bless you. Take a risk. So that's important. You know, the farmer knows there will be some losses sometimes. Spirit of fear, spirit of, it's not from God. Reject it. Let, let me even come to us. My brother, look at yourself. Look at yourself from head to toe. My sister, look at yourself from head to toe. Do you understand that God took a risk in creating man? At the end of the day, what did we do? We disobeyed. Adam fell in the Garden of Eden. You don't think that God will be disappointed? He created man in his own image. And that man messed up big time. And we are the ones. God took a risk in creating man. He created man in his own image. That man will replicate him. But man went astray. We failed. We messed up big time. But think about today. Look at the technological breakthroughs. Look at the medical inventions. Look at how man is conquering the environment. Look at the conquest of space. We are going to Mars. We are going to the moon. We are going to the planets. We are doing exploration. Now they are talking about, you know, space tourism. Man has, is, domi is dominating everything. As the risk God taking, has it found out well? Yes, we have this spiritual dominion. The risk has, has, has paid off. God took a risk in creating you. If, uh, do you think that God didn't know that man could fall? But he still went ahead and took a risk and created man. <laughs> we should we should be like God. You know, when I look at God, I say, wow. He knew what man is capable of doing, and yet he created it. He took a risk. And then you are a child of God. You don't want to take a risk. You just want to stay there. And I pray that you'll be like your father, like your father in heaven, that took a risk to create man. Even though man failed, even though man disappointed him, he found a way to bring man to the place of dominion once again. And that's what we are enjoying today. God took a risk in creating man. Unfortunately, we messed up. God's intention was cre I mean, creating something wonderful, something beautiful. However, in the end, we ended up ugly and warped. But when you look at the technological breakthroughs today, the spiritual dominion that we are experiencing, the shaping of the environment, the conquest of space, the risk that God took has paid off. My brother, take a risk, sow your seed. In the morning, sow your seed. In the evening, we told all your hand. Take a risk and cast your bread upon the waters. The Bible says, after many days, you will find it. Take a risk and go to the camp of the Syrians, like the lepers. Instead of dying, you may live and find abundance, but you must take a risk. And I'm praying tonight. I, I, I pray I've spoken to some people. I pray I've woken up some sleeping giants. 
I pray that some of the money that is uh, sleeping the sleep of death in the bank accounts, they are going to get out of that place and take a risk. I'm praying that God is going to open doors of opportunity and abundance to his people. The courage to take a risk. The courage to venture out. The courage to do something great. The courage to take a risk that will profit your life. I pray that God is going to give you that courage. Every spirit of fear that has anchored you to the short line of failure. Every spirit of fear that has not made you to be able to move forward and advance. I pray that tonight they will be cast out in Jesus' name. Let's Rise up and pray, and you tell God, Oh God, I'm taking a risk. I'm taking a risk. I will access, but I'm taking a risk. Enough of all this life in the valley. I'm going to the mountain top. I'm going forward. I'm taking the risk. I'm doing something wonderful with my life. Enough of all this kind of risk aversion and then just wasting away. God is calling you. It's important, my brother. Take a risk. My sister, take a risk. In your family, take a risk. You know, with your life, take a risk. With your resources, take a risk. Don't hide your talent in a napkin and bury it in the soil. That's bad. Don't hide your pound in a napkin and bury it in the soil. Take a risk and trade with it. Take a risk and invest it. Take a risk and deploy it. Take a risk and do something with it. Go towards the place of achievement. Go towards the place of accomplishment. Don't let risk and passion paralyze you. Don't let risk and passion keep you, you know, in the valley of defeat, in the, in the valley of non-achievement. Take a risk. My brother, take a risk. My sister, take a risk. Risk is part of life. Risk does not kill. If you if you take intelligent risk, you will come out great. You will come out glorious. You will come out in a great way. Take a risk. Take a risk. We talked about the color of risk. Take a risk, my brother. Take a risk, my sister. Very important. Take a risk. God took a risk in creating man. Take a risk. Take a risk. Take a risk and step out of the boat and step on the water. You can walk on the water. Take a risk. Even though there's a possibility of sinking, take a risk. Even though you have toiled all the night and you have taken nothing, my sister, take a risk. Launch out into the deep. 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 God is waiting for you. God is telling you, you can be better than this. The resources I've given you, you can multiply it more than this. Don't let your resources be sleeping the sleep of death in, in bank accounts. Take a risk. Tonight is a night to break free. Break, break free from inactivity. Break free from paralysis. Break free from risk aversion. Break free. Take a risk. Life is about taking risk. We take risk every every time. But we take intelligent risks. We take risks we have well assessed and we can manage those risks. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, I just pray tonight, any of your children on the platform, that their lives have been blighted, blighted by risk aversion. Their progress has been hampered because they never take risk. Anytime they want to step out into a new venture, something will come and tell them there's a lion in the streets. If you try it, you will be dead. And eventually they are deflated. One year, two years, three years, that project they want to do, they've never had the courage to pursue the project because of this conversion. I'm praying tonight, every, everything that tie you down, 
every rope of excavation that tie you down to the short line of paralysis and inactivity and failure. I cut them off your life in Jesus' name. Every spirit of fear, fear of failure, fear of loss, fear of what people will say, fear of this, fear of that, that hinders you from making progress, hinders you from taking this, hinders you from attempting things that could benefit your life. I pray that those fears tonight, I bind them, every spirit of fear in your life, I cast them out in Jesus' name. Amen. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. The spirit of courage, courage to take action, courage to step on the water, courage to launch out into the deep, courage to confront Goliath, courage to step out and be different. Oh Lord, I pray you will grant unto your people in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we assess risks and with wisdom, we take risks and we manage risks. Oh Lord, let abundance come the, I mean, the way of your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the result of risk taking, let it be profitable unto them in Jesus' name. Amen. The farmer in Matthew chapter 13, he took a risk with his seed. Yes, some were lost by the wayside. Yes, some were lost among thorns. Yes, some were lost on the rocky soil. But some grew on the good soil and produced 30 fold, 60 fold, and 100 fold. The farmer came back rejoicing. You have told us you will multiply our seed soul. And if we go weeping, very precious seed, we will come back again with rejoicing, bringing in the seeds with us. Lord, I pray as your people decide from tonight that enough of this conversion. I'm done with risk aversion. I'm going to take intelligent risk. I'm going to move forward and launch out into the deep. Oh Lord, let them come back with sheep, with rejoicing, bringing in the sheep with them in Jesus' name. Amen. Let abundance and accomplishment mark their risk taking in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. Thank in you, Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen.